smile, you're on candid camera. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Africa Today. Today, the Watch Democracy Movement brings together African leaders in one room to discuss issues that are relevant to them. And one of the issues being immigration. And today we're joined via satellite by the founder and the president and CEO of African Communities Together, ACT. And that's no other person but Amaha Kasa, who joins us via satellite from New York. Hi, Amaha. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right. So we want to hear from you. I know that you've been talking to other communities, but this is a different group in a different room. And so we would like to hear from you what African Communities Together is doing to help the community of Africans and other communities as well. And then after that, of course, the members in the room will be obligated to ask you some questions. I'm sure you're ready for that. All right, Very let's good. hear from you. Um, well, so the important thing to remember with regards to immigration uh, and immigration law and immigration policy is that even in this current moment uh, where we have a political administration uh, that has demonstrated itself to be so hostile uh, to many of our countries and to many of our people here in this country, um, is that we still, uh, as uh, Africans in, in America, as Americans, uh, that we still enjoy certain fundamental rights. Um, and it's important to protect those rights and to defend those rights and uh, to vindicate those rights. Uh, so uh, the first thing that my organization does is uh, work with people in immigration legal services uh, to ensure that they are uh, adjusting their immigration status, uh, that they are taking full advantage of the immigration laws. Uh, so, a, for example, uh, we provide immigration legal services in both our New York and Washington, D.C. offices. Um, and then we receive phone calls often from people all over the country where we try to re uh, refer them to uh, free or low-cost immigration legal services uh, close to them. Um, the second is that we educate the community uh, how to protect their rights under the law. So uh, we organize uh, trainings in New York. We hold these monthly in something that we call the Community Guardians Network, uh, where we go in depth uh, to help people understand if you are confronted by immigration enforcement, by law enforcement, uh, how should you behave? How should you, uh, if you, if there's a knock on your door and ICE is there looking for you or a member of your family, uh, what are your rights in that moment? Uh, if you are witnessing an interaction, do you have the right to videotape it? If someone from your church, mosque, or association um, uh, says, you know, one of my family members was detained by ICE uh, yesterday, uh, what is likely to happen to that person and how can you support them? Um, so that's the second thing. So direct immigration, legal services, and then education. Um, the second, the third thing, rather, that we do is we work to uh, change the laws and policies of this country. Um, so uh, we do that through legislation, and we also do that through litigation. Uh, with respect to legislation, uh, uh, one big concern for us right now are the thousands of Africans uh, from uh, over uh, from six different countries who have uh, benefited from a program called Temporary Protected Status, or TPS, or a very closely related program uh, called DED, or Deferred Enforced Departure. Uh, and those countries include Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone, uh, Sudan, South Sudan, and uh, Somalia. Uh, and those, uh, and we can report now uh, that that. Uh that Congress will be introducing legislation. It, it's, it's anticipated to be introduced on March 12th, uh, that along with uh, DREAMers, uh, you, you know, undocumented youth, would provide a path to status 
uh, for TPS holders, DED holders, and former TPS holders. Uh, and we're going to be working very hard uh, to ensure that that passes into law and that as it's negotiated, it does not leave out uh, any of our vital communities. And the very last thing I'll say um, is that sometimes we have to go to the courts uh, and ask them to defend our rights. Uh, and we have done that already uh, in the litigation called Ramos v. Nielsen. Uh, we're one of nine plaintiffs. Uh, who sued to, uh, the, the Trump administration uh, for ending the TPS program. Uh, we said, you know, that not only did the Trump administration not follow proper procedure in ending that program, but when Donald Trump said to a group of lawmakers uh, this horrible slur, which you can't say on camera, uh, referring to African uh, and Latin American countries, that was clear evidence uh, that the program was ended out of bias. Uh, the judge uh, said that we had a strong case and granted an injunction that maintained uh, TPS for Sudan and the three other countries. And I can tell you now that we are planning within the next week to introduce similar litigation uh, on behalf of uh, holders of deferred and forced departure from Liberia. Uh, and we'll have more to share about that, uh, hopefully uh, in the very near future. All right. Thank you very much, Amaha. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that somebody's hand is already up. Um, so Amaha spoke about, we do have a representative here, though, from the DC office. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Um, I'm sure that the questions are already ringing out in our minds, not um, embodying the legislation, whether it's from training or the TPS. So the floor is now open. Uh, Victor? Yeah. Mr. Amaha, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, a year ago, we hear that Trump also planned to, um, I think, to terminate a uh, lottery visa program. And uh, we watched a lot of movement, especially Spanish. They were very active, they, they lobbied. But we did not see uh, a lot of African being concerned. Uh, I was part of uh, some movement. Uh, we went to the to the uh, to the Congress, but we were like less than less than 50 people to go and play for the whole African continent. So, what is the what is the uh, the program of CTC also in regard of uh, uh, the program of lottery visa? Uh, do you guys have uh, any contact in the Congress so that we can put this also as it is or to lobby there, or if not? Uh, we can work together also to because I see that you guys are more powerful than our individual uh, movement. So, is there any program that you have? Otherwise, do you have any contact in Congress? If not, can we work together so that we can introduce you some to some Congress uh, people so that this program also be? We they know that African also are very concerned about this uh, uh, project to terminate or uh, to end the uh, uh, lottery visa. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, the 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 diversity lottery, uh, the diversity uh, visa program, sometimes called the green card lottery or the or the lottery program, um, admits over forty thousand. Uh, immigrants legally to the U.S. every year. Um, f uh, something like 40% of the beneficiaries of that program uh, are from Africa. Uh, the top receiving countries from the diversity visa program uh, are Egypt, and uh, number one, and then Ethiopia, number two. Um, our, our D.C. chapter president, who's in the room with you, Bert Bayou, uh, 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 Bert uh, came to the country as a, as a diversity lottery uh, uh, winner. Uh, and it's a very important program and uh, one unfortunately about which there are a lot of misconceptions. The term lottery has really been um, misrepresented to make it sound like someone's standing out in street corners in Addis Ababa or um, you know, Legos handing out green cards left and right when we know uh, that it is a multi-year process. 
uh, of being screened uh, and being found to be eligible for the program uh, before you're admitted to this country. Um, so uh, we will fight for the program. There have been unfortunate attempts to end it. Uh, some of them uh, we have fought back in public, in the press. Uh, Bert has been part of those. It's been a public spokesperson uh, at advocate, uh, you know, at, at actions to save the program. Um, but one of our biggest fights came um, about a year and a half ago uh, when there was a proposal to uh, cut the program, uh, to eliminate it entirely uh, in exchange for essentially relief for dreamers. Uh, you know, the, the line taken was that, well, we're going to eliminate the green card, uh, pro the diversity visa lottery, and in exchange we'll do um, employment and family preferences uh, for Africa. And, you know, we uh, worked very closely with other black immigrant organizations, an organization called Undocu Black Network, uh, and with the Congressional Black Caucus uh, to inform members of Congress why this was uh, insufficient. Uh, only 1% of employment-based visas currently go to Africa. Um, there, we know that there's rampant employment discrimination, and the idea that you would replace a program uh, like the diversity lottery with with employment and family preferences, uh, when the whole point of diversity lottery is that many uh, African countries uh, have limited family reunification means to come to this country and face uh, employment discrimination, uh, it was was just entirely unacceptable. And we're happy that. Um, the Congressional Black Caucus rejected that proposal uh, and informed uh, the, the leadership of the Democratic Caucus that it was unacceptable and that it was rejected. Um, but Victor, I think that we will be in that fight again. Um, the administration has put this program in its crosshairs. And unfortunately, even some of the original Democratic authors of the program, uh, like Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, who helped create the program, um, have not been strong uh, advocates for it. So we need to help uh, put some, some put some steel in their spines. All right, thank you. Anybody else has a question? I think it's a forum like this, Amaha, that you will also need to support you in that fight. I think it's a necessary fight. And just to add to that question, Victor, I think um, knowing our rights and knowing that it's presence that makes a difference, the reason why the Latino community is making the difference because they have a presence. So us coming together as like us in this room and our organizations will also bring that great presence and then they will hear us. All right, thank you. I have another question. All right. Yes. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Cindy, and and we we very much appreciate working with Task. Uh, uh, task refers us cases, and very often we refer Task cases. Um, you know, we really are all committed to the same goal of, of ensuring that everyone receives uh, really high quality um, immigration legal assistance and um, gets the help that they need. And and uh, you know, we really value the partnership with Task and look forward to continue to work, continuing to work with you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. My name is Yaya Fanusi. I'm Republican. I'm a Trump Republican. I belong to the Trump underground. We also have been working on this for the African immigrants, so we don't go out and say what we're doing. So you guys can take as much credit as you have. You don't know what we're doing to protect our people here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you. I know you're doing it for the community. Anybody else? Any other question? Yes, Dr. Blind. Question to Professor. The president has the authority to allow, it was a million people per year as immigrants into the United States under his signature alone. Have we made any inroads into seeing that a percentage of that is inclusive of people coming from Africa. And has that number changed up to two million now? 
was always one million for a long period of time. I see it's part of the recovery. Uh, it, it's, it's an excellent question. Um, I think that uh, really the momentum that we've been seeing has been going in the opposite direction. Um, uh, under the refugee resettlement program, in the last year of the Obama administration, uh, refugee resettlement numbers were right around 100,000 uh, uh, resettled. And of that, usually about 40% uh, came from Africa. Um, you know, obviously it fluctuated uh, year by year uh, in response to various humanitarian disasters. Um, uh, so in under the Trump administration, I, you know, really we've had two significant developments. One is an escalation uh, in enforcement of immigration law, which is some of the things that I talked about, uh, you know, increased activity uh, by ICE, you know, uh, uh, enforcement where it wouldn't, didn't used to take place historically, such as, uh, um, you know, in courtrooms, uh, in, in, in courts of law, that kind of thing. But then the second is, um, and, and really I think this has been driven by some people in the administration, like um, in particular Stephen Miller, um, that there's been a targeting of the avenues uh, for legal uh, immigration, um, uh, including programs like the diversity visa program and including refugee resettlement, um, and, it's seek and seeking to either eliminate them or drastically scale them back. Um, what that's meant for the refugee resettlement program uh, is two things. One is that the admission numbers um, have dropped to record lows, you know, lows that we haven't seen in decades. Um, I'm, I'm not going to remember the exact numbers uh, uh, off the top of my head, but it's something like uh, dropping from about 100,000 to dropping to uh, 30 to 40,000. And then on top of that, uh, so the um, the numbers have uh, the pipeline has slowed down. Uh, that they, you know it's already a multi-year process uh, for a refugee to be screened um, and it, uh, prior to being admitted to this country. There's extensive biometrics, background testing, um, and and so forth. Uh, and that that process is stretched out even further. Uh, so, to, so what was a, a you know perhaps a two-year pipeline is now a four or five. Uh, year pipeline. So, you know, the issue that you're raising of, of equity and parity um, in resettlement numbers is important, but the point is that the, the, the pipeline has grown so narrow um, that very few people are being resettled uh, at, at whatsoever. Um, so it's, it's a real, um, you know, there's an important role for the U.S. to play in sharing uh, the humanitarian obligation with uh, the other countries of the world. We know that most uh, refugee resettlement actually happens in, na in neighboring countries, right? Um, so it happens in countries like Ethiopia, Kenya, Jordan, uh, etc., uh, that absorb influxes of displaced um, uh, uh, peoples. Um, but it's Im important for the developed countries of the world uh, to shoulder part of that burden. Um, and unfortunately, in the last uh, couple of years, we've seen a retreat uh, from some of those uh, historic obligations. And so that's something that we really need to rebuild. All right, thank you very much. So Amaha, my question would be, what kind of support would you consider or would you want from an organi a big organization like this? What kind of support are you looking for from leaders from the African community? Yeah. Well, so I just having heard uh, part of the meeting and seen your agenda and, and, and uh, hearing the perceptive questions, um, I think that you, that, you know, it's clear that all of you are leaders in your respective areas uh, and that you're working, uh, pursuing a number of strategies for advancement of our communities, both uh, here in the U.S. and uh, back on the African continent. Uh, so I think first and foremost, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting and it's great to hear about. Um, uh, secondly, I think as, as Victor and other people have referenced, you know, we really are stronger together. Um, we are going to be engaging in a range of action uh, from, uh, you, know, pro you know, meetings uh, with our members of Congress, public actions. 
uh, sometimes uh, actions over social media um, to uh, advocate for various issues affecting our communities. A lot of that in the near future is really going to be focused on temporary protected status from Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone. Uh, we know we have a lot of members of those communities um, uh, within the, the DMV region, as well as uh, the other TPS holding countries, including Sudan, South Sudan, and Somalia. Um, so. Um, so, so we would we urge, urge people, people to get involved, involved. Um, you know, it's especially powerful if you're, uh, uh, for those of you from Maryland, um, our senators have actually been great, um, uh, you know, on, on TPS, uh, great leadership on TPS. Um, Virginia, uh, there's still more to do um, uh, in terms of educating uh, our representatives on TPS and asking them to take leadership. Uh, again, TPS bill drops March 12th, and we have uh, probably about a month before it, it works its way out of the House uh, in which to make sure that our communities are included in the bill uh, passes. Um, and so one resource uh, that I want to put out to you, and uh, maybe Bert, uh, you can pass around a sign-up sheet or um, contact, collect contact information since you're there in person. Uh, we organize a monthly call uh, that's called ALEF, the African, Legisla African Immigration, Le Immigration Legislative Forum. African Immigrant Legislative Forum, my apologies. Uh, so ALEF, the African Immigrant Legislative Forum, uh, that is essentially an update on federal immigration policy for African immigrant uh, organizations, leaders, and African serving organizations. Um, to hear what's happening with immigration policy and how uh, you can get involved. Um, so there's an email list, email listserv, and a conference call. And that's one of the best ways where you can hear, uh, learn, and uh, take information that you can share back with your community and get activated. All right. Thank you very much. Do we have any other, other questions? No? We're fine. So how do we reach you? For those uh, viewers who will be watching this later, how can we reach ACT? How can we reach you or your staff if we have any further questions? You can always contact us via our website, which is www.africans.us. Uh, so that's Africans with an S dot US. Uh, or contact our number, uh, our, our main uh, conference line, which is 347 seven four six two two eight one or send an email to info at africans.us and for those of you uh in the room uh you know wanted to be sure that you can connect with our um, dc maryland virginia staff uh and hoping that we will um continue to to build the partnership and work closely together all right, thank you very much, Amaha. It was great. It's always great listening to you and just enlightening us. This again is Africa Today. We hope to see you and hear from you again. Thank you very much. Uh, this is me, Sia Matilda Bange. Thank you.